morning. Welcome to our worship today at Martin Luther. The theme of our worship is how the Lord loves the lost and searches for them and finds them. Today we'll be using the service of morning praise that begins on page 45. And to open our service, we will sing the morning hymn that is printed on page 45 in the front of the hymnal. Please stand for the morning hymn.
seated to a psalm of the day. Please take out the psalm insert from the bulletin and we will sing Psalm 51 to 8 together. <laughs> lessons, we see the Lord's great love and relenting from his anger, even after grievous sin by his people. The first lesson is from Exodus chapter 32. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go down, because the people whom you brought up out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them, and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it, and have said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are a stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone, so that my anger may burn against them, and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. But Moses sought the favor of the Lord his God. O Lord, he said, Why should your anger burn against your people? 
whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce anger, relent, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give your descendants all this land I promised them, and it will be their inheritance forever. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. Our second lesson is from 1 Timothy chapter 1. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me faithful, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance, ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe on him and receive eternal life. Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Hallelujah. We sing him 493. <laughs> and peace are yours, God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's Gospel is from Luke chapter 15. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable, Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. And he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. 
Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. brothers and sisters in Christ. Is this a book that you have at home? In case you can't see, it's the story of Corduroy Bear. You have at least two or three copies of this book at home. Do you remember the story of Corduroy? Corduroy was one blessed bear. Life hadn't started out that good for him. Told that day after day he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. The store was always filled with shoppers by all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. No one had to pick him up off the shelf. No one had to take him home. After all, he was missing a button. He could have been returned to the factory marked no good. Could have simply been thrown away. But then one day, along came a little girl named Lisa. And Lisa loved the corduroy. She went home and brought back her own money and purchased corduroy to be her own. She brought corduroy home. And in Lisa, corduroy finally had found bread. I think that that story of corduroy can serve as a little bit of an illustration for us of the kind of love that the Lord has for the lost. The love that we read about in the Gospel of Luke for today. Only by God's love are we rescued from destruction and brought home to our Lord in heaven. And also, what's more, that love of the Lord that we have received is a love that we never deserved or expected. Yet it's a love from the Lord that we have. And so today we celebrate and rejoice in this, that the Lord loves the lost, to receive them with rejoicing, and to receive them through repentance. People don't really like to ask for directions, do they? We have the stereotype of the man who refuses to ask for directions even when he's lost because he's too proud or too stubborn to do so. At the same time, it's pretty important to know if you're lost, because otherwise you're going to keep on going on the way you have been going and go wherever that leads you. It's also a terrible feeling when we realize that we're lost. I think because you realize that you're separated. That's certainly a point that Jesus explains here, that one sheep was separated from the flock, from the shepherd, that one coin was separated from its owner, uh, when a, a child is lost in a store, they panic because they're separated from their parents and they don't know what to do. If we're driving down the road and all of a sudden we realize that we are lost, we panic, don't we? Because we don't have our bearings. We don't have that safety and security that comes from knowing where we are. Uh, and we've left the path that we need to be on. Jesus in these parables doesn't so much explain our feelings though of being lost so much as the Lord's love for the lost and the way that he seeks those who have been separated from him how he seeks them out with his word he finds them and brings them home we have these two parables the parable of the lost sheep where the shepherd leaves the 99 and goes after that one lost sheep until he finds it and when he finds it what's his reaction he is filled with joy. He puts it on his shoulders. He goes home. He calls his friends and neighbors together. He says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. And the parable of the lost coin really has the same point. A woman has lost one of her ten silver coins. She lights a lamp. She sweeps the house. She searches for it until she finds it. And then she calls all of her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found I lost the coin. There's, there's a common theme there. The Lord loves the lost. He doesn't reject them. He searches for them. 
He rejoices when they are found, and all of heaven rejoices with him. Italian says there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And I think that's an amazing thing. What is it that the Lord and his angels and maybe other heavenly creatures rejoice about in heaven? What brings them joy? It brings them joy when people return to the Lord, when lost people are found. The Lord rejoices. We rejoice too. Because although the Lord could reject us, He hasn't. Instead, we've seen His love. Like corduroy missing a button, we too are defective. We're defective because of our sins. We're defective because sometimes we are the ones who have separated ourselves from the Lord by the things that we have done or failed to do. Tattered and torn, the Lord should reject us and discard us away from his presence forever. But the Lord has not rejected us, has he? Instead, the Lord searches for us because he loves us. Maybe that's something that we've experienced in life, seeing that once we were lost, but the Lord went out and got us and made us found again. I think that's something we can only see in hindsight. Because the thing about getting lost is that you don't realize it when you're getting lost. Only after it's been pointed out to you, the path that you've been going on, do you see the wrong path that you had been on. The thing about being lost is that you don't realize it at the time. And so it's so important that the Lord does this work. It's so important for us that the Lord has this kind of love to search for us, even when we don't deserve it, to search for the lost and to find them. Because we had followed our noses. We had followed the way that seemed right to us. It separated us from the Lord. But he searched for you. And when he found you, there was great rejoicing in heaven. The Lord rejoices when he finds the lost. He rejoices that you are with him again right now. He rejoices that you will be with him forever in heaven. But since this is not a physical seeking and finding, I think there's also a second lesson that the Lord wants us to think about today. It's not actual sheep that the Lord is going after. It's not an actual coin that he's sweeping the ground for. It's human souls. And the point of these parables is all summed up in one word. Every sinner who repents. God finds you and me through repentance. I don't know that Corduroy the Bear had any sins to be sorry for. After all, he was the stuffed animal. But the relief that he had when he was found is a relief that you and I also feel. When we see that we are loved by the Lord, when we see that we are valued by him, when we see that we have someone we trust. Repentance means having a change of mind or a change of heart about ourselves and about our relationship with God. Like Corduroy, that we might mean a change from fearing that we are not loved to seeing that indeed we are loved. But also a change of heart from loving our sins to having sorrow over them. A change in our heart from being afraid of God to trusting in Jesus. But today I want to focus especially on that second part of repentance, trust in Jesus by which we have the joy of forgiveness. And yes, repentance does also first involve sorrow over sin. And not just the sorrow at the consequences that sin might bring, not just the sorrow over the things that naturally happen because of what we've done, but a deep and great grief that comes from seeing that I myself have failed to love God and my neighbor perfectly. The breathtaking realization that we deserve eternal hell for our failures. That's the first part of repentance. But today we especially want to look at the second part of repentance, which is joy. Joy that the Lord loved us despite ourselves. Joy that the Lord paid for the guilt of all of our sins in the cross of Jesus. Trust that Jesus did this for you and for me. If we look 
back at the first two verses of this reading. Do you see why Jesus told this parable? It says, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear him. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Jesus was at this moment doing exactly what he was talking about in the parable. And that's why he gives this explanation. He was welcoming sinners. He was finding the lost. He was going to those tax collectors and other people who were looked down on by all the righteous people. And he was bringing them forgiveness and salvation as they believed in him. So at that very moment, there was joy in heaven over sinners who repented. I tell you, Jesus said that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. It was right for Jesus to go after the lost, and it was right for Jesus to be bringing them home. We don't ever want to be like the Pharisees who were too proud to see that they were lost, who were too proud to look at the map and ask for directions, who refused to see that they needed Jesus' help. We do want to humble ourselves like those who saw that Jesus was their Savior. So brothers and sisters, use the map that God has given you in his word so that you may never be lost. God's word is a mirror that we can show up, that we can hold up in front of ourselves. And it shows us the truth. God's word is a map that shows us the way and if we have strayed from it. I didn't know I had lost a button, Corduroy said, until someone, Lisa's mother, pointed it out to him. And our repentance also begins with God pointing out to us the faults that we have. But then look to what happened on Good Friday. You know how Lisa, in the story of Corduroy, brought her own money, paid for Corduroy, and then brought him home. Jesus has paid for you with his own life, with his own blood. And he's opened the door to heaven so that you too may go home. Therefore, we can now rejoice together in that truth. Really, I think we could say that we relive our baptism every time we use God's word in this way. In your baptism, you drowned and died together with Jesus, and you were raised to life with him. In your baptism, Jesus worked a change of heart in you from loving yourself to trusting in you. So for every sin today, go back to those waters of your baptism and find forgiveness from the Lord. Corduroy was one blessed bear. No one had to take him off the shelf. No one had to bring him home. After all, he was missing a button. He should have gotten returned to the factory. He could have gotten thrown away. But that one little girl named Lisa loved him and fought and brought him home. If the Lord God lost one out of a hundred sheep or one out of ten coins, he wouldn't need to go and find him because he has a lot. But the Lord loves the lost. He loves you, tattered and torn with sin. He paid for you with the blood of his son. He has brought you home to his family through repentance at which the angels in heaven rejoice. So in the Lord, you have finally found a friend. Because the Lord loves the lost. Let's take comfort and joy in that today, that the Lord loves the lost. The Lord rejoices when they are found. The Lord rejoices in you. Please stand. The peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds by faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. On page 48 of the service, we continue by singing, We Praise You, O God.
Jesus, teach us the lesson you have taught to feel for those your blood has bought, that every word and deed and thought may work a work for you. All our redeemed, both far and wide, since you, O Lord, for all have died, O oh, teach us whatsoe'er be tied to love them all in you. Accept this token of our love, direct its use from heaven above, and by your spirit each heart move to give good gifts to you. Amen. Please stand. And if you turn to page 50 in the service, we will continue with Lord have mercy and the prayers on page 50. In the us with your mighty power, and grant that this day we neither fall into sin, nor run into any kind of danger, and in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. <laughs> 